Hi there everyone, Cody Don here. So a friend of mine, Joseph Bjork. Alright, so Joseph and Joseph are going to throw rocks out onto the lake. Contacted me recently about a potential source of bog iron here in the state of Utah. Now this really piqued my interest because bog iron is not something you generally find in these dry states because you need a bog, which is pretty uncommon here. You know, you don't get a lot of swampy areas that aren't the Great Salt Lake. And so, of course, I'm very skeptical on this claim, but he did show some sources online and also some images uh, through, you know, Google Earth that show that, yeah, that looks like we might have a source of iron. And so we are planning on mounting an expedition up into the mountains of Utah during the winter in order to potentially find this. I'm wondering how wise it is to drive this far up into the mountains during a snowstorm. But uh, that will be over on his channel. You guys can uh, go down in the description or wherever I've put the link and uh, head on over there and you guys can see us bumble around trying to find it. Here on my channel I'm going to briefly explain what bog iron is, how it is formed, and why it was so useful. So, what is bog iron? Well, from the name we know that it is material from a bog a swampy area that contains lots of iron. In fact, it is a type of iron ore. With gertite and its hydrated form, ilmenite, probably being the most common iron-bearing minerals present. Here in Utah, most of the uh, sources of iron you find is like red stained clay and sandstone, but this stuff has very low concentrations of iron in it. You know, less than 1% in most cases. Bog iron, though, can contain way more than that which means it would be comparatively very easy to smelt. So, how is this stuff formed? Well, it starts off with groundwater containing dissolved iron ions. In order to simulate this, I am going to mix a small amount of ferrous sulfate, uh, just uh, barely a pinch here, with some water in a flask. So now I have my iron-rich groundwater. Uh, this would uh, come up through the ground and into the bog, or maybe wash down the mountain. And bacteria would concentrate the iron ions through their normal biological processes. So now that I have my concentrated iron, the conditions in the bog, which are acidic and oxidizing, will slowly convert this from the plus two to the plus three oxidation state. In fact, you can already see it's happening because this is an old sample of ferrous sulfate. You can see the kind of an orangish color forming. But to speed things along, I can add some uh, hydrogen peroxide to oxidize it much more rapidly. To oxidize it, and you can see the color changed to a deep orangish color. And uh, this, if I haven't gone too far and oxidized it all the way to hematite, is the same thing that you would find in a bog. So this is tiny insoluble particles which will settle out on the plant material, the plant material will rot away, leaving this behind. And eventually should form pretty hefty deposits, which unlike the banded iron deposits, is actually fairly renewable. In a couple of generations, the bog might replenish all of its iron. So I've just barely scraped the surface of this topic. If you guys want me to uh, revisit it, I will. But uh, for now, you guys probably ought to head over and uh, watch the video of us going and getting it, and then come back maybe in about a month and we'll actually try smelting it. So, hope you enjoyed. I'll see you then. Yeah. Now this rock right here, though, that looks like Gertite. 